Financial Accounting 8, Investments, Trading, and Available for Sale Securities. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page and our LinkedIn group, MBA Accounting and Finance. I'd like to talk about an area that has caused a, uh, a fair amount of confusion with students, so I think it's a valuable thing to talk about, and that is securities. And the key to this issue, I think, is in order to have a realized gain, and we talk more about realized gains when we're talking about um, taxes in particular, you have to have a buy and a sell to have a realized gain. And if you don't, it's unrealized. That means when you have a buy and no sell. Let me go on and define what trading securities means just um, conceptually. The goal is to be traded. You may see uh, if you see commercials on TV for mutual funds, for example, the, the portfolio is actively managed, which means that they, one of the goals is to trade and sell securities if they can make a gain. Another way of saying it is the holding period is not an issue. The reason we talk about them in financial reporting, really, not just financial accounting, is in the balance sheet, we're going to have these securities counted, included in current assets, and the common definition is we're going to convert them into cash within 12 months. That's the common definition of a current asset, current being 12 months or less. The value of these trading securities is the fair market value. The way we do that practically is we go through a process called mark to market at month end, quarter end, year end, where we get quotes on the market values of the securities because most securities that a firm will own will trade on an exchange or among traders and there will be uh, buy and sell prices available just about every business day. We use that new value to adjust the carrying amount. A carrying amount is the another, another way of saying the value on the balance sheet up or down. So let's take an example. On January 1st our investor buys a hundred ten thousand shares at a dollar price of a dollar forty a share. So if I multiply ten thousand times a dollar forty per share, I debit a new asset account called Trading Securities. It's a current asset. I credit or reduce cash for the cash payment. And the explanation that I put on the entry was to record purchase of securities. Then we get to the end of the year and we notice that the fair market value, FMV, has gone up. We had a cost basis of $140 a share. Now we have a value of $152 a share. So if I take $10,000 times the increase in the market value from cost, which is an increase of $12 from $140 to $152, 10000 times that $12 difference if I multiply that out, is $120,000. Now the question is, what do I do with that increase from the cost to the fair market? Our answer is to recognize the change in the val market value of that security. We're going to have an account called Market Adjustment Trading Security that we debit, which is a way of increasing the asset account. That's also an asset account. And you note that we credit unrealized gain on security for the same amount. Again, the reason that we do that, the reason that it's unrealized, is that we have a buy but not a sell. And since there's not a buy and a sell, it's an unrealized gain. That's why we credit unrealized gain for securities to segregate that $120,000 increase. The balance sheet presentation will be just like most other assets, we're going to record the trading securities at the cost. We're going to add in the market value adjustment. We add it up and we get trading securities at market. Another common misconception is dividends. What if the 10,000 shares that we own get a 50 cent per share dividend declared? Now I always preface this by saying you have to have earnings to have a dividend. If there are no earnings, by definition, you cannot pay a dividend. The emphasis for the balance sheet presentation is that the dividend does not change the trading security balance. 
that balance stays the same. So we have a receivable for the $5,000, 50 cents times 10,000 shares, and we recognize by crediting dividend income the, the, the income from the dividend, and nothing has changed in the balance sheet as far as the trading securities goes. My explanation is to record dividend receivable on trading securities. What if the fair market value of the price goes down <coughs> from $152 a share in 08 to $145 a share at the end of 09? Essentially what we're going to do is we increased market value adjustment here by $12. Now we're going to reduce it by $7 because the difference between the $145 and the $152 is $7 times 10,000 shares, we need to reduce the value in our books by $70,000. So we do that by reducing the market value adjustment account, crediting to reduce it, and we have an unrealized loss on trading. Again, we have a buy and no sell. It's an unrealized loss as we saw at the top of the page. Let's say that nine months later, 9-18-2010 approximately, we sell some of the shares for 158, actually we sell all the shares, excuse me, for $158 a share. That's more than the $140 a share that we paid. Now what I like to do here is, let's not think about the numbers, let's simply think about what would be a journal entry without any numbers. Well we're going to get some cash in the door, we're going to take the trading securities off the books at historical cost. We're going to, we're going to uh, remove the market value adjustment trading account because we don't own the shares anymore, so we've got to zero that out. And then the difference between those three entries, the plug figure, is going to be a gain or a loss. So let's talk about specifics and numbers. 10,000 shares times the $158 gets us $1 580 debit to increase cash or receivable. The question the student had wasn't specific as to whether it was cash or not. I'm taking that trading security off the books at 1.4 million which was the original cost. My market value trading account was first debited for 120 then it got credited for 70 so to bring the account to zero we need to credit it for $50,000 now the market adjustment account is zero as we'll see in a minute and the plug figure to make debits equal total credits which you can't quite read right here is I need a credit of $130,000 to make the entry balance since it's a credit it's a realized gain. What I did down here was simply plug in market value adjustment for trading securities. We started off with a debit we credited to reduce it, and then at the end of 09, we, cr we uh, credited to get rid of that $50,000 balance. To wrap up here, available for sale securities are a non-current asset because we intend to hold them for a long time. <coughs> Look at this though, the only difference from the trading security process is when we value those increases and decreases in the fair value. We use an account called unrealized change for available for sale securities, which is an equity account. The market adjustment trading security affected, if I go back up, an asset account and an income statement account. Available for sale affects an equity account instead of, in capital letters, an income account, unrealized gain loss. And the, what I say here is the result is just change the title of the unrealized gain or loss account and you'll just about have what's going on with available for sale. That's as far as we'll get on financial accounting 8, trading and available for sale securities. Are not on the web and our website has additional videos and spreadsheets not on YouTube. You can also purchase the YouTube videos themselves. You can email for a complete list of our videos on YouTube. <coughs> Ken Boyd STL is the YouTube channel for live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat sessions stltest.net is our website address
Thanks very much for watching, and we will see you next time.